John's Account, Chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was toward God, and God was the Word. This was in the beginning toward God. All came into being through it, and apart from it, not even one thing came into being which has come into being. In it was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light is appearing in the darkness, and the darkness grasped it not. There came to be a man commissioned by God. His name was John. This one came for a testimony that he should be testifying concerning the light that all should be believing through it. Not he was the light, but he came that he should be testifying concerning the light. It was the true light, which is enlightening every man, coming into the world. In the world he was, and the world came into being through him, and the world knew him not. To his own he came, and those who are his own accepted him not. Yet whoever obtained him, to them he gives the right to become children of God, to those who are believing in his name, who were begotten not of bloods, neither of the will of the flesh, neither of the will of a man, but of God. And the word became flesh and tabernacles among us, and we gaze at his glory, a glory as of an only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. John is testifying concerning him, and has cried, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who is coming after me has come to be in front of me. For he was first before me, for of that which fills him we all obtained, and grace for grace. For the law through Moses was given. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. God no one has ever seen. The only begotten God, who is in the bosom of the Father, He unfolds Him. And this is the testimony of John when the Jews of Jerusalem dispatched to him priests and Levites that they should be inquiring of him, Who are you? And he avows and denies not, and avows that I am not the Christ. And they ask him again, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he is saying, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. They said then to him, Who are you, that we may be giving an answer to those who send us? What are you saying concerning yourself? He averred, I am the voice of one imploring. In the wilderness straighten the road of the Lord, according as said Isaiah the prophet. And those who have been dispatched were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said to him, why, then, are you baptizing, if you are not the Christ, neither Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, saying, I am baptizing in water. Now in the midst of you one stood of whom you were not aware. He it is who, coming after me, has come to be in front of me, of whom I am not worthy that I should be loosing the thong of his sandal. These things occurred in Bethany, the other side of the Jordan River, where John was, baptizing. On the morrow he is observing Jesus coming toward him, and is saying, Lo, the Lamb of God which is taking away the sin of the world. This is he concerning whom I said, After me is coming a man who has come to be in front of me, for he was first before me, and I was not aware of him but that he may be manifested to Israel. Therefore came I, baptizing in water. And John testifies, saying that, I have gazed upon the Spirit, descending as a dove out of heaven, and it remains on him. And I was not aware of him, but he who sends me to be baptizing in water, that one said to me, 
on whomever you may be perceiving the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who is baptizing in Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have testified that this one is the Son of God. On the morrow John again stood, and two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus walking, he is saying, Lo, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples hear him speaking, and they follow Jesus. Now Jesus, being turned and gazing at them following, is saying to them, What are you seeking? Yet they said to him, Rabbi, which being construed is termed teacher, where art thou remaining? He is saying to them, Come and see. They came then and perceived where he is remaining, and they remained with him that day. It was about the tenth hour. Now Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who hear from John and follow him. This one first is finding his own brother, Simon, and is saying to him, We have found the Messiah, which is being construed Christ. And he led him to Jesus. Looking at him, Jesus said, You are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which is being translated Peter. On the morrow, he wants to come away into Galilee, and he is finding Philip. And Jesus is saying to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip is finding Nathanael, and is saying to him, Him of whom Moses writes in the law and the prophets have we found, Jesus, a son of Joseph from Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good be out of Nazareth? Philip is saying to him, Come and see. Jesus perceived Nathanael coming toward him and is saying concerning him, Lo, truly an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Nathanael is saying to him, Whence do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip summons you, when you were under the fig tree, I perceived you. Nathanael answered and is saying to him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Seeing that I said to you that I perceived you underneath the fig tree, are you believing? Greater things than these should you be seen. And he is saying to him, Verily, verily, I am saying to you, Henceforth you shall be seen heaven opened up, and the messengers of God ascending and descending on the Son of Mankind. Chapter 2 And on the third day a wedding occurred in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now Jesus also was called to the wedding and his disciples. And at their being in want of wine, the mother of Jesus is saying to him, They have no wine. And Jesus is saying to her, What is it to me and to thee, woman? Not as yet is my hour arriving. His mother is saying to the servants, Anything which he should be saying to you, do. Now there were six stone water pots lying there in accord with the cleansing of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. And Jesus is saying to them, Brim fill the water pots with water. And up to the brim they fill them. And he is saying to them, Draw now and bring to the chief of the dining room. Now they bring it. Now as the chief of the dining room tastes the water become wine and was not aware whence it is, yet the servants who have drawn the water were aware, the chief of the dining room is summoning the bridegroom and is saying to him, Every man is placing the ideal wine first, and whenever they should be made drunk, then the inferior. Yet you have kept the ideal wine hitherto. This beginning of the signs Jesus does in Cana of Galilee 
and manifests his glory, and his disciples believe in him. After this, he descended into Capernaum, he and his mother and his brothers and disciples, and there they remain not many days. And near was the Passover of the Jews, and Jesus went up into Jerusalem. And he found in the sanctuary those selling oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers sitting. And making a whip out of ropes, he casts all out of the sanctuary, both the sheep and the oxen, and he pours out the change of the brokers and overturns the tables. And to those selling doves he said, Take these away hence, and do not be making my father's house a house for a merchant's store. Now his disciples are reminded that it is written, The zeal of thy house will be devouring me. The Jews then answered and said to him, What sign are you showing us, seeing that you are doing these things? Jesus answered and said to them, Raise this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, in forty and six years was this temple built, and you will be raising it up in three days. Yet he said it concerning the temple of his body. When, then, he was roused from among the dead, his disciples are reminded that he said this, and they believe the scripture and the word which Jesus said. Now, as he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the festival, many believe in his name, beholding his signs which he did. Yet Jesus himself did not entrust himself to them because of his knowing all men. For he had no need that anyone should be testifying concerning mankind, for he knew what was in mankind. Chapter 3 Now there was a man of the Pharisees, Nicodemus his name, a chief of the Jews. This one came to him by night and said to him, Rabbi, we are aware that thou art a teacher come from God, for no one can be doing these signs which thou art doing if God should not be with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I am saying to you, if anyone should not be begotten anew, he cannot perceive the kingdom of God. Nicodemus is saying to him, how can a man, being a veteran, be begotten? He cannot be entering into the womb of his mother a second time and be begotten. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I am saying to you, if anyone should not be begotten of water and of spirit, he cannot be entering into the kingdom of God. That which is begotten by the flesh is flesh, and that which is begotten by the spirit is spirit. You should not be marveling that I said to you, You must be begotten anew. The blast is blowing where it wills, and the sound of it you are hearing, but you are not aware whence it is coming and where it is going. Thus is everyone who is begotten by the water and the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, you are a teacher of Israel, and these things you do not know? Verily, verily, I am saying to you, that of that which we have perceived are we speaking, and to that which we have seen are we testifying, and our testimony you are not getting. If I told you of the terrestrial, and you are not believing, how shall you be believing if I should be telling you of the celestial, and no one has ascended into heaven except he who descends out of heaven, the Son of Mankind who is in heaven. And according as Moses exalts the serpent in the wilderness, thus must the Son of Mankind be exalted, that everyone believing on him should not be perishing, but may be having life eonian. For thus God loves the world, so that he gives his only begotten Son, that everyone who is believing in him should not be perishing, but may be having life eonian. For God does not dispatch his Son into the world that he should be judging the world, 
but that the world may be saved through him. He who is believing in him is not being judged. Yet he who is not believing has been judged already, for he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now this is the judging, that the light has come into the world, and men love the darkness rather than the light, for their acts were wicked. For everyone who is committing bad things is hating the light and is not coming to the light, lest his acts may be exposed. Now he who is doing the truth is coming to the light that his acts may be made manifest, for they have been wrought in God. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. Now John also was baptizing in Enon near Salem, for there was much water there, and they came along and were baptized for not as yet was John cast into jail. There occurred, then, a questioning of the disciples of John with a Jew concerning cleansing. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who is with you on the other side of the Jordan, to whom you have testified, lo, this one is baptizing, and all are coming to him. John answered and said, A man cannot get anything, if it should not be given him out of heaven. You yourselves are testifying to me that I said, Not I am the Christ, but that dispatched am I in front of him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, yet the friend of the bridegroom who stands and is hearing him is rejoicing with joy because of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy, then, has been fulfilled. He must be growing, yet mine it is to be inferior. He who from above is coming is over all. He who is of the earth is of the earth, and of the earth is speaking. He who is coming out of heaven is over all. What he has seen and hears, this he is testifying, and no one is getting his testimony. He who is getting his testimony sets his seal that God is true. For he whom God commissions is speaking God's declarations, for God is not giving the Spirit by measure. The Father is loving the Son, and has given all into his hand. He who is believing in the Son has life eonian, yet he who is stubborn as to the Son shall not be seeing life, but the indignation of God is remaining on him. Chapter 4 As, then, the Lord knew that the Pharisees hear that Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John, though, to be sure, Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples. He leaves Judea and came away again into Galilee. Now he must pass through Samaria. He is coming, then, to a city of Samaria termed Sychar, nigh the freehold which Jacob gives his son Joseph. Now there was a spring of Jacob's there. Jesus, then, weary with the journey, was seated thus at the spring. It was about the sixth hour. A certain woman of Samaria is coming to draw water. Jesus is saying to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had come away into the city that they should be buying nourishment. The Samaritan woman, then, is saying to him, How are you, being a Jew, requesting a drink from me? being a Samaritan woman. For Jews are not beholden to Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you were aware of the gratuity of God and who it is who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would request him, and he would give you living water. The woman is saying to him, Lord, you have not even a bucket, and the well is deep. Whence, then, have you living water? 
Not greater are you than our father Jacob, who gives us the well. And he himself drank out of it in his sons, and what was nourished by him. Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who is drinking of this water will be thirsting again. Yet whoever may be drinking of the water which I shall be giving him shall under no circumstances be thirsting for the eon. But the water which I shall be giving him will become in him a spring of water welling up into life eonian. The woman is saying to him, Lord, give me this water that I may not be thirsting, nor yet coming to this place to draw. Jesus is saying to her, Go, summon your husband, and come to this place. The woman answered and said to him, No husband have I. Jesus is saying to her, Ideally said you that a husband I have not, for five husbands have you had, and now he whom you have is not your husband. This you have declared truly. The woman is saying to him, Lord, I behold that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where one must worship. Jesus is saying to her, Believe me, woman, that coming is an hour when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem shall you be worshiping the Father. You are worshiping that of which you are not aware. We are worshiping that of which we are aware, for salvation is of the Jews. But coming is the hour, and now is, when the true worshipers will be worshiping the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father also is seeking such to be worshiping Him. God is spirit, and those who are worshiping Him must be worshiping in spirit and truth. The woman is saying to him, We are aware that Messiah is coming, who is termed Christ. Whenever he should be coming, he will be informing us of all things. Jesus is saying to her, I am he who am speaking to you. And at this his disciples came, and they marveled that he spoke with a woman. Howbeit no one said to him, What are thou seeking? Or what art thou speaking with her? The woman then leaves her water pot and came away into the city and is saying to the men, Hither, perceive a man who told me all whatever I do. Is not this the Christ? They then came out of the city and came to him. Now in the meantime, the disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, eat. Yet he said to them, I have food to eat of which you are not aware. The disciples then said to one another, No one brings him aught to eat. Jesus is saying to them, My food is that I should be doing the will of him who sends me and should be perfecting his work. Are you not saying that still four months is it, and the harvest is coming? Lo, I am saying to you, lift up your eyes and gaze on the countrysides, for they are white for harvest already. And he who is reaping is getting wages and is gathering fruit for life eonian, that both the sower and the reaper likewise may be rejoicing. For in this case is the saying true that one is the sower, and another is the reaper. I commission you to reap that for which you have not toiled. Others have toiled, and you have entered into their toil. Now out of that city many of the Samaritans believe in him because of the word of the woman, testifying that he told me all whatever I do. As, then, the Samaritans came together to him, they asked him to remain with them. And he remains there two days. And many more believed because of his word. Besides, to the woman they said that, No longer because of your speaking are we believing, for we ourselves have heard him, and we are aware that this truly is the Savior of the world, the Christ. 
Now after the two days he came out thence and came away into Galilee, for Jesus himself testifies that a prophet has no honor in his own country. When, then, he came into Galilee, the Galileans receive him, having seen all whatever he does in Jerusalem in the festival. But they also came to the festival. Jesus came again, then, into Cana of Galilee, where he makes the water wine. And there was a certain courtier whose son was infirm in Capernaum. This man, hearing that Jesus is arriving in Galilee from Judea, came away to him and asked him that he may be descending and should be healing his son, for he was about to die. Jesus then said to him, If you should not be perceiving signs and miracles, you should under no circumstances be believing. The courtier is saying to him, Lord, descend ere my little boy dies. Jesus is saying to him, Go, your son is living. And the man believes the word which Jesus said to him and went. Now as he is already descending, his slaves meet him and they report, saying that his boy is living. He then ascertained from them the hour in which he was better. And they said then to him that yesterday at the seventh hour the fever leaves him. The father knew then that it was in that hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son is living. And he believes, he and his whole house. Now this, again, is the second sign Jesus does, coming out of Judea into Galilee. Chapter 5 After these things there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up into Jerusalem. Now there is, in Jerusalem, at the Sheep Gate, a pool which is termed in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porticos. In these were laid down a multitude of the infirm, blind, lame, withered, waiting for the stirring of the water. For a messenger of the Lord at a certain season bathed in the pool and disturbed the water. He then who first steps in after the disturbing of the water became sound of whatsoever disease he was held. Now a certain man was there, having been in his infirmity thirty-eight years. Jesus, perceiving this one lying down, and knowing that he has already spent much time, is saying to him, Do you want to become sound? The infirm man answered him, Lord, I have no man that, whenever the water may be disturbed, should be casting me into the pool. Now in the time in which I am coming, another is descending before me. Jesus is saying to him, Rouse, and pick up your pallet, and walk. And immediately the man became sound, and he was roused, and picks up his pallet, and walked. Now it was a Sabbath on that day. The Jews then said to him, who has been cured, It is a Sabbath, and it is not allowed you to pick up your pallet. Yet he answered them, He who makes me sound, that one said to me, Pick up your pallet and walk. They asked him then, Who is the man who said to you, Pick up your pallet and walk? Now he who is healed had not perceived who he is, for Jesus evades him, a throng being in the place. After these things, Jesus is finding him in the sanctuary, and said to him, Lo, you have become sound. By no means longer be sinning, lest something worse may be coming to you. And the man, then, came away and informs the Jews that Jesus is the one who makes him sound. And therefore the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him, for he did these things on a Sabbath. Yet Jesus answers them, My Father is working hitherto, and I am working. Therefore then the Jews sought the more to kill him, 
For he not only annulled the Sabbath, but said his own Father also is God, making himself equal to God. Jesus then answers and said to them, Verily, verily, I am saying to you, the Son cannot be doing anything of himself if it is not what he should be observing the Father doing. For whatever he may be doing, this the Son also is doing likewise. For the Father is fond of the Son and is showing him all that he is doing. And greater works than these shall he be showing him, that you may be marveling. For even as the Father is rousing the dead and vivifying, thus the Son also is vivifying whom he will. For neither is the Father judging anyone, but has given all judging to the Son, that all may be honoring the Son according as they are honoring the Father. He who is not honoring the Son is not honoring the Father who sends him. Verily, verily, I am saying to you that he who is hearing my word and believing him who sends me has life eonian and is not coming into judging but has proceeded out of death into life. Verily, verily, I am saying to you that coming is an hour and now is when the dead shall be hearing the voice of the Son of God and those who hear shall be living. For even as the Father has life in himself, Thus to the Son also he gives to have life in himself. And he gives him authority to do judging, seeing that he is a son of mankind. Marvel not at this, for coming is the hour in which all who are in the tombs shall hear his voice, and those who do good shall go out into a resurrection of life, yet those who commit bad things into a resurrection of judging. I cannot do anything of myself. According as I am hearing, am I judging. And my judging is just, for I am not seeking my will, but the will of him who sends me. If I should be testifying concerning myself, is my testimony not true? There is another who is testifying concerning me, and I am aware that the testimony which he is testifying concerning me is true. You have dispatched to John, and he has testified to the truth. Yet I am not getting the testimony from man, but I am saying these things that you may be saved. He was a lamp, burning and appearing, yet you want to exult an hour in its light. Now I have a testimony greater than John's, for the works which the Father has given me that I should be perfecting them the works themselves which I am doing are testifying concerning me that the Father has commissioned me. And the Father who sends me, he has testified concerning me. Neither have you ever heard his voice, nor a perception of him have you seen. And his word you do not have remaining in you, for that one whom he commissions, this one you are not believing. Search the scriptures, for in them you are supposing you have life eonian, and those are they which are testifying concerning me. And not willing are you to come to me, that you may have life. Glory from men I am not getting. But I know you, that you have not the love of God in yourselves. I have come in the name of my Father, and you are not getting me. If another should be coming in his own name, him you will get. How can you believe, getting glory from one another, and are not seeking the glory which is from God alone? Be not supposing that I shall be accusing you to the Father. He who is accusing you to the Father is Moses, on whom you rely. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he writes concerning me. Now if you are not believing his writings, how shall you be believing my declarations? Chapter 6 After these things, Jesus came away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee of Tiberias. Now there followed him a vast throng, for they beheld the signs which he did on the infirm. Now Jesus came up into the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now near was the Passover, the festival of the Jews. 
Jesus then, lifting up his eyes and gazing, for a vast throng is coming toward him, is saying to Philip, Whence should we be buying bread that these may be eating? Now this he said to try him, for he was aware what he was about to be doing. Then Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that each may get a bit. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, is saying to him, There is a lad here who has five cakes of barley bread and two food fishes, but what are these for so many? Yet Jesus said, Make the people lean back. Now there was much grass in the place. The people then leaned back, the men in number about five thousand. Jesus then took the bread, and giving thanks, he distributes it to those lying back. Likewise also of the food fish, as much as they wanted. Now as they are filled, he is saying to his disciples, Gather the superfluous fragments, lest some should perish. They gathered them then, and crammed twelve panniers with fragments of the five cakes of barley bread, which are superfluous for those who were fed. The men then, perceiving the sign which Jesus does, said that this truly is the prophet who is coming into the world. Jesus then knowing that they are about to come and snatch him, that they should be making him king, retires again into the mountain by himself alone. Now as it became evening, his disciples descended to the sea. And stepping into the ship, they came to the other side of the sea, to Capernaum. And darkness had already come, and Jesus had not as yet come to them. Besides, the sea was roused by the blowing of a great wind. Having then rowed about twenty-five or thirty stadia, they are beholding Jesus walking on the sea and coming to be near the ship, and they were afraid. Yet he is saying to them, It is I, do not fear. They wanted then to take him into the ship, and immediately the ship came to be at the land to which they went. On the morrow, the throng, standing on the other side of the sea, perceived that no other boat was there except one, and that Jesus did not enter the ship together with his disciples, but his disciples came away alone. But boats out of Tiberias came near the place where they ate the bread for which the Lord gave thanks. When, then, the throng perceived that Jesus is not there, neither his disciples, they stepped into the boats and came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. And finding him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when camest thou to be here? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I am saying to you, You are seeking me, not that you perceived signs, but that you ate of the bread and are satisfied. Do not work for the food which is perishing, but for the food which is remaining for life eonian which the Son of Mankind will be giving to you. For this one God the Father seals. They said then to him, What may we be doing that we may be working the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you may be believing in that one whom he commissions. They said then to him, what sign, then, are you doing that we may be perceiving and should be believing you? What are you working? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, according as it is written, Bread out of heaven he gives them to eat. Jesus then said to them, Verily, verily, I am saying to you, Not Moses has given you the bread out of heaven, But my Father is giving you bread out of heaven, the true for the bread of God is he who is descending out of heaven and giving life to the world. They said then to him, Lord, always be giving us this bread. Jesus then said to them, I am the bread of life. He who is coming to me should under no circumstances be hungering, and he who is believing in me will under no circumstances ever be thirsting. But I said to you that you have also seen me, and you are not believing me. 
all that which the Father is giving to me shall be arriving to me. And he who is coming to me, I should under no circumstances be casting out. For I have descended from heaven, not that I should be doing my will, but the will of him who sends me. Now this is the will of him who sends me, that all which he has given to me, of it I should be losing nothing, but I shall be raising it in the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who is beholding the Son and believing in him may have life eonian, and I shall be raising him in the last day. The Jews then murmured concerning him that he said, I am the bread which descends out of heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, with whose father and mother we are acquainted? How then is he saying that out of heaven have I descended? Jesus then answered and said to them, Do not murmur with one another. No one can come to me if ever the Father who sends me should not be drawing him, and I shall be raising him in the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Everyone, then, who hears from the Father and is learning the truth is coming to me. Not that the Father has been seen by anyone except by the one who is from God. This one has seen the Father. Verily, verily, I am saying to you that he who is believing in me has life eonian. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which is descending out of heaven that anyone may be eating of it and may not be dying. I am the living bread which descends out of heaven. If anyone should be eating of this bread, he shall be living for the eon. Now the bread also which I shall be giving for the sake of the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then fought with one another, saying, How then can this one give us his flesh to eat? Jesus then said to them, Verily, verily, I am saying to you, If you should not be eating the flesh of the Son of Mankind and drinking his blood, you have no Ionian life in yourselves. He who is masticating my flesh and drinking my blood has life Ionian, and I shall be raising him in the last day, for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. He who is masticating my flesh and drinking my blood is remaining in me and I in him. According as the living Father commissions me, I also am living because of the Father. And he who is masticating me, he also will be living because of me. This is the bread which descends out of heaven, not according as the fathers ate and died. He who is masticating this bread shall be living for the eon. These things he said, teaching in a synagogue in Capernaum. Many of his disciples then, hearing it, said, Hard is this saying, who can hear it? Now Jesus, being aware in himself that his disciples are murmuring concerning this, said to them, This is snaring you. If then you should be beholding the Son of Mankind ascending where he was formerly, the Spirit is that which is vivifying. The flesh is not benefiting anything. The declarations which I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. But there are some of you who are not believing. For Jesus had perceived from the beginning who those are who are not believing and who it is that gives him up. And he said, Therefore have I declared to you that no one can be coming to me if it should not be given him of the Father. At this, then, many of his disciples came away, dropping behind, and walked no longer with him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Not you also are wanting to go away. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we come away? 
declarations of life Ionian hast thou. And we believe and know that thou art the Holy One of God. Jesus answered and said to them, Do not I choose you, the twelve, and one of you is an adversary? Now he said it of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, for this man was about to give him up, being one of the twelve. Chapter 7 And after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Judea, for the Jews sought him to kill him. Now near was the Jews' festival of tabernacles. His brothers then said to him, Proceed hence and go away into Judea, that your disciples also should be beholding your works which you are doing. For no one is doing anything in hiding when he is seeking publicity. If you are doing these things, manifest yourself to the world. For not even his brothers believed in him. Jesus then is saying to them, The season for me is not as yet present, yet the season for you is always present, ready. The world cannot be hating you, yet me it is hating, for I am testifying concerning it that its acts are wicked. You go up to this festival. I am not going up to this festival, for the season for me has not as yet been fulfilled. Now, saying these things to them, he remains in Galilee. Yet as his brothers went up to the festival, then he also went up, not apparently, but as though in hiding. The Jews then sought him in the festival and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring concerning him among the throngs. These, indeed, said that he is good. Yet others said, no, but he is deceiving the throng. Howbeit no one spoke with boldness concerning him because of fear of the Jews. Now at length, midway of the festival, Jesus went up into the sanctuary and taught. The Jews then marveled, saying, How is this one acquainted with letters, not having learned? Jesus then answered them and said, my teaching is not mine, but his who sends me. If anyone should be wanting to be doing his will, he will know concerning the teaching, whether it is of God or I am speaking from myself. He who is speaking from himself is seeking his own glory. Yet he who is seeking the glory of him who sends him, this one is true, and injustice is not in him. Has not Moses given you the law, and not one of you is doing the law? Why are you seeking to kill me? The throng answered, A demon have you, who is seeking to kill you? Jesus answered and said to them, One act I do, and all of you are marveling. Therefore Moses has given you circumcision, not that it is of Moses, but that it is of the fathers. And on a Sabbath you are circumcising a man. If a man is getting circumcision on a Sabbath, lest the law of Moses may be annulled, am I raising your bile, seeing that I make a whole man sound on a Sabbath? Be not judging by the countenance, but be judging just judging. Some of the Jerusalemites then said, Is not this he whom they are seeking to kill? And lo, he is speaking with boldness. And are they saying nothing to him, lest at some time the chiefs truly get to know that this is the Christ? But this man, we are aware whence he is, yet the Christ, whenever he may be coming, no one knows him whence he is. Jesus then cries in the sanctuary, teaching and saying, You are acquainted with me also, and you are aware whence I am. And I have not come from myself, but he who sends me is true, with whom you are not acquainted. Yet I am acquainted with him, 
for I am from him, and he has commissioned me. They sought then to arrest him, and no one laid a hand on him, for not as yet had come his hour. Now many of the throng believe in him and said, The Christ, whenever he may come, he no more signs will be doing than what this man does. Now the Pharisees hear this murmuring of the throng concerning him, and the chief priest and the Pharisees dispatch deputies that they should be arresting him. Jesus then said, Still a little time am I with you, and I am going away to him who sends me. You will be seeking me, and you shall not be finding me. And where I am, there you cannot be coming. The Jews then said to themselves, Where is he about to go that we shall not find him? He is not about to go to the dispersion of the Greeks and teach the Greeks. What is this word which he said, You will be seeking me, and you shall not be finding me, and where I am you cannot be coming? Now on the last, the great day of the festival, Jesus stood and cries, saying, If anyone should be thirsting, let him come to me and drink. He who is believing in me, according as the scripture said, out of his bowels shall gush rivers of living water. Now this he said concerning the spirit, which those believing in him were about to get. For not as yet was Holy Spirit given, for Jesus is not as yet glorified. Some of the throng then, hearing these sayings, said that this truly is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. Yet they said, For not out of Galilee is the Christ coming. Did not the scripture say that out of the seed of David and from Bethlehem, the village where David was, comes the Christ? There came then to be a schism in the throng because of him. Yet some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one lays hands on him. The deputies then came to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said to them, Wherefore did you not lead him here? Now the deputies answered, Never speaks a man thus. The Pharisees then answered them, Not you also are deceived. Not any of the chiefs believes in him or of the Pharisees. But this throng that knows not the law is accursed. Nicodemus is saying to them, who formerly came to him being one of them, No law of ours is judging a man, if ever it should not first be hearing from him and know what he is doing. They answered and say to him, Not you also are out of Galilee? Search and see that out of Galilee no prophet is roused. And they went each to his home. Chapter 8 Yet Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early he again came along into the sanctuary, and the entire people came to him. And being seated, he taught them. Now the scribes and the Pharisees are leading a woman who has been overtaken in adultery, and standing her in the midst, they are saying to him, Teacher, this woman has been overtaken and detected committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses directs us that such are to be stoned. You, then, what are you saying? Now this they said to try him, that they may have something to accuse him of. Now Jesus, stooping down, wrote down something with a finger in the earth. Now as they persisted asking him, he unbends and said to them, Let the sinless one of you first cast a stone at her. And again stooping down, he wrote in the earth, now those hearing it came out one by one, beginning with the elders to the last. And Jesus was left alone, the woman also being in the midst. Now, unbending, Jesus said to her, 
Woman, where are they? Does no one condemn you? Now she said, No one, Lord. Now Jesus said, Neither am I condemning you. Go, from now on, by no means any longer be sinning. Again, then, Jesus speaks to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who is following me should under no circumstances be walking in darkness, but will be having the light of life. The Pharisees then said to him, You are testifying concerning yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered and said to them, And if I should be testifying concerning myself, true is my testimony, for I am aware whence I came and whither I am going. Yet you are not aware whence I am coming or whither I am going. You are judging according to the flesh. I am not judging anyone. And yet if ever I should be judging, my judging is true. For not alone am I, but I am the Father who sends me. Yet in this law also of yours it is written that the testimony of two men is true. I am the one testifying concerning myself, and the Father who sends me is testifying concerning me. They said then to him, Where is your Father? Jesus answered and said, Neither with me are you acquainted, nor with my Father. If you were acquainted with me, you should be acquainted with my Father also. These declarations he speaks in the treasury, teaching in the sanctuary, and no one arrests him, for not as yet had come his hour. He said then again to them, I am going away, and you will be seeking me, and in your sin shall you be dying. Where I am going, you cannot be coming. The Jews then said, He will not kill himself seeing that he is saying, Where I am going, you cannot be coming. He said then to them, You are of that which is below. I am of that which is above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I said then to you that you shall be dying in your sins. For if ever you should not be believing that I am, you shall be dying in your sins. They said then to him, Who are you? Jesus then said to them, For the beginning, what I am speaking also to you. Much have I to be speaking and judging concerning you, but he who sends me is true, and what I hear from him, these things I am speaking to the world. They know not that he said this to them of the Father. Jesus then said to them again that, Whenever you should be exalting the Son of Mankind, then you will know that I am, and from myself I am doing nothing. But according as my Father teaches me, these things I am speaking. And he who sends me is with me. He does not leave me alone. For what is pleasing to him am I doing always. At his speaking these things, many believe in him. Jesus then said to the Jews who have believed him, If ever you should be remaining in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will be making you free. They answered him, The seed of Abraham are we, and we have never been slaves of anyone. How are you saying that you shall be becoming free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I am saying to you that everyone who is doing sin is a slave of sin. Now the slave is not remaining in the house for the eon. The son is remaining for the eon. If ever, then, the sun should be making you free, you will be really free. I am aware that you are Abraham's seed, but you are seeking to kill me, 
for my word has no room in you. What I have seen with my father am I speaking. You also, then, what you hear from your father are doing. They answered and say to him, Our father is Abraham. Jesus answered them, If you are children of Abraham, did you ever do the works of Abraham? Yet now you are seeking to kill me, a man who has spoken to you the truth which I hear from God. This Abraham does not do, yet you are doing the works of your father. They say to him, We were not born of prostitution. One father have we, God. Jesus then said to them, If God were your father, you would have loved me. For out of God I came forth, and am arriving. For neither have I come of myself, but he commissions me. Wherefore do you not know my speech, seeing that you cannot hear my word? You are of your father, the adversary, and the desires of your father you are wanting to do. He was a man-killer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth for truth is not in him. Whenever he may be speaking a lie, he is speaking of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Yet I, seeing that I am speaking the truth, you are not believing me. Who of you is exposing me concerning sin? If I am telling the truth, wherefore are you not believing me? He who is of God is hearing God's declarations. Therefore, you are not hearing, seeing that you are not of God. The Jews answered and say to him, Are we not saying ideally that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered and said, I have no demon, but I am honoring my Father, and you are dishonoring me. Now I am not seeking my glory. He is the one who is seeking it and judging. Verily, verily, I am saying to you, if ever anyone should be keeping my word, he should under no circumstances be beholding death for the eon. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died and the prophets and you are saying, if ever anyone should be keeping my word, he should under no circumstances be tasting death for the eon. Not you are greater than our father Abraham who died, and the prophets died. Whom are you making yourself to be? Jesus answered, If I should ever be glorifying myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who is glorifying me of whom you are saying that he is your God. And you know him not, yet I am acquainted with him. And if I should be saying that I am not acquainted with him, I shall be like you, a liar. But I am acquainted with him, and I am keeping his word. Abraham, your father, exults that he may become acquainted with my day, and he was acquainted with it and rejoiced. The Jews then said to him, You have not as yet lived fifty years, and you have seen Abraham. Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I am saying to you, Ere Abraham came into being, I am. They pick up stones then, that they should be casting them at him. Yet Jesus was hid, and came out of the sanctuary. And passing through the midst of them, he went, and thus passed by. Chapter 9 And passing along, he perceived a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he should be born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man sinned nor his parents but it is that the works of God may be manifested in him. I must be working the works of him who sends me 
while it is day. Coming is the night when no one can work. Whenever I may be in the world, I am the light of the world. Saying these things, he spits on the ground and makes mud out of the spittle, and anoints the blind man on his eyes with the mud, and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is being translated, commissioned. He came away then, and washes, and came observing. The neighbors then, and those beholding him formerly, for he was a beggar, said, Is not this the one who is sitting and begging? Others said that this is he. Yet others said, No, but he is like him. Yet he said, I am he. They said then to him, How then were your eyes opened? He answered and said, The man who is termed Jesus makes mud and anoints my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool Siloam and wash. Coming away then and washing, I receive sight. And they say to him, Where is that man? He is saying, I am not aware. They are leading him, who once was blind, to the Pharisees. Now it was on a Sabbath day that Jesus makes the mud and opens his eyes. Again then, the Pharisees also asked him how he received sight. Now he said to them, He places mud upon my eyes, and I wash, and I am observing. Some of the Pharisees then said, This man is not from God, for he is not keeping the Sabbath. Yet others said, How can a man who is a sinner be doing such signs? And there was a schism among them. They are saying then again to him who once was blind, What are you saying concerning him, seeing that he opened your eyes? Now he said that, A prophet is he. The Jews then do not believe concerning him that he was blind and received sight, till they summon the parents of him who received sight. And they ask them, saying, Is this your son, of whom you are saying that he was born blind? How then is he observing at present? His parents then answered and say, We are aware that this is our son, and that he was born blind. Yet how he is now observing we are not aware, or who opens his eyes we are not aware. Ask him, he has come of age, he will speak concerning himself. These things his parents said, seeing that they feared the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should ever be avowing him to be Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents say that he has come of age, inquire of him. A second time then they summon the man who was blind, and they say to him, Give the glory to God. We are aware that this man is a sinner. He then answered, If he is a sinner, I am not aware of it. One thing I am aware of, that being blind at present, I am observing. They said then to him again, What does he do to you? How does he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you do not hear. Why again are you wanting to hear? Not you also are wanting to become his disciples. Now they revile him and said, You are a disciple of that man, yet we are disciples of Moses. We are aware that it was to Moses that God has spoken. Yet this man, we are not aware whence he is. The man answered and said to them, For in this is the marvelous thing, that you are not aware whence he is, and he opens my eyes. We are aware that God is not hearing sinners, but if anyone should be a reverer of God and doing his will, him he is hearing. From out of the eon it is not heard that anyone opens the eyes of one born blind. Except this man were from God, 
he could not be doing anything. They answered and say to him, You were wholly born in sins, and you are teaching us. And they cast him out. Jesus hears that they cast him out, and finding him, said to him, Are you believing in the Son of Mankind? He answered and said, And who is he, Lord, that I should be believing in him? Now Jesus said to him, You have also seen him, and he who is speaking with you is he. Now he averred, I am believing, Lord, and he worships him. And Jesus said, For judgment came I into this world, that those who are not observing may be observing, and those observing may be becoming blind. And those of the Pharisees who are with him hear these things, and they said to him, Not we also are blind. Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have had no sin. Yet now you are saying that we are observing. Your sin, then, is remaining. Chapter 10 Verily, verily, I am saying to you, he who is not entering through the door into the fold of the sheep, but is climbing up elsewhere, that one is a thief and a robber. Now he who is entering through the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper is opening, and the sheep are hearing his voice, and he is summoning his own sheep by name, and is leading them out. And whenever he should be ejecting all his own, he is going in front of them, and the sheep are following him, for they are acquainted with his voice. Now an outsider will they under no circumstances be following, but they will be fleeing from him, for they are not acquainted with the voice of the outsiders. Jesus told them this proverb, yet they know not what things they were that he spoke to them. Jesus then said to them again, Verily, verily, I am saying to you that I am the door of the sheep. All whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep do not hear them. I am the door. Through me, if anyone should be entering, he shall be saved, and shall be entering and coming out, and will be finding pasture. The thief is not coming except that he should be stealing and sacrificing and destroying. I came that they may have life eonian, and have it superabundantly. I am the shepherd ideal. The ideal shepherd is laying down his soul for the sake of the sheep. Yet the hireling, not also being shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, is beholding the wolf coming, and is leaving the sheep and fleeing. And the wolf is snatching them and is scattering the sheep. Yet the hireling is fleeing, for he is a hireling, and he is not caring concerning the sheep. I am the shepherd ideal, and I know mine, and mine know me, according as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And my soul am I laying down for the sake of the sheep. And other sheep have I, which are not of this fold. Those also I must be leading, and they will be hearing my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. Therefore the Father is loving me, seeing that I am laying down my soul that I may be getting it again. No one is taking it away from me, but I am laying it down of myself. I have the right to lay it down, and I have the right to get it again. This precept I got from my Father. A schism came again among the Jews because of these words. Now many of them said, A demon has he, and is mad. Why are you hearing him? Yet others said, These declarations are not those of a demoniac. No demon can open the eyes of the blind. Now there came to be the dedications in Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the sanctuary in the portico of Solomon. The Jews then surround him, and they said to him, Till when are you lifting our soul? If you are the Christ, tell us with boldness. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you are not believing. The works which I am doing in the name of my Father, these are testifying concerning me. But you are not believing, 
seeing that you are not of my sheep, according as I said to you. My sheep are hearing my voice, and I know them, and they are following me. And I am giving them life eonian, and they should by no means be perishing for the eon, and no one shall be snatching them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to be snatching them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father, we are one. Again, then, the Jews bear stones that they should be stoning him. Jesus answered them, Many ideal acts I show you from my Father. Because of what act of them are you stoning me? The Jews answered him, For an ideal act we are not stoning you, but for blasphemy, and that you, being a man, are making yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law that I say you are gods? If he said those were gods to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be annulled, are you saying to him whom the Father hallows and dispatches into the world that you are blaspheming, seeing that I said, Son of God am I? If I am not doing my Father's works, do not believe me. Yet if I am doing them, and if ever you are not believing me, be believing the works that you may be knowing and believing that in me is the Father, and I am in the Father. They sought then to arrest him again, and he came out of their hands. And he came away again to the other side of the Jordan, into the place where John was formerly baptizing, and he remains there. And many came to him, and they said that John indeed does not one sign, yet all whatever John said concerning this one was true. And many believe in him there. Chapter 11. Now there was a certain infirm man, Lazarus, from Bethany, of the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. Now it was Mary who rubs the Lord with adder, and wipes off his feet with her hair, whose brother, Lazarus, was infirm. The sisters then dispatched to him, saying, Lord, lo, he of whom thou art fond is infirm. Yet Jesus, hearing it, said, This infirmity is not to death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God should be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. As then he hears that he is infirm, then, indeed, he remains in the place in which he was two days. Thereupon, after this, he is saying to his disciples, We may be going into Judea again. The disciples are saying to him, Rabbi, the Jews now sought to stone thee, and art thou going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone should be walking in the day, he is not stumbling, for he is observing the light of this world. Yet if anyone should be walking in the night, he is stumbling, for the light is not in him. He said these things, and after this he is saying to them, Lazarus, our friend, has found repose, but I am going that I should be awakening him out of sleep. The disciples then said to him, Lord, if he has repose, he shall be saved. Now Jesus had made a declaration concerning his death, yet they suppose that he is saying it concerning the repose of sleep. Jesus then said to them with boldness then, Lazarus died. And I am rejoicing because of you, that you should be believing, seeing that I was not there. But we may be going to him. Thomas then, who is termed Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, We also may be going, that we may be dying with him. Jesus then, on coming into Bethany, found he has been in the tomb four days already. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about fifteen stadia off. Now many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary, that they should be comforting them concerning their brother. Martha then, as she hears that Jesus is coming, meets him. Yet Mary was seated in the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, 
if thou wert here, my brother would not have died. But even now I am aware that whatsoever thou shouldest be requesting of God, God will be giving to thee. Jesus is saying to her, Your brother will be rising. Martha is saying to him, I am aware that he will be rising in the resurrection in the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who is believing in me, even if he should be dying, shall be living. And everyone who is living and believing in me should by no means be dying for the eon. Are you believing this? She is saying to him, Yes, Lord, I have believed that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. And saying this, she came away and summons Miriam, her sister, covertly, saying, The teacher is present and is summoning you. Now as she hears, she was roused swiftly and came to him. Now Jesus had not as yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha meets him. The Jews then, who were with her in the house and comforting her, perceiving Mary, that she rose quickly and came out, follow her, supposing that she is going to the tomb, that she should be lamenting there. Mary then, as she came where Jesus was, perceiving him, falls at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if thou wert here, my brother would not have died. Jesus then, as he perceived her lamenting, and the Jews coming with her lamenting, mutters in spirit and disturbs himself. And he said, Where have you placed him? They are saying to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus weeps. The Jews then said, Lo, how fond he was of him. Yet some of them said, Could not this one who opens the eyes of the blind man also make it that this man should not be dying? Jesus then, again muttering in himself, is coming to the tomb. Now it was a cave, and a stone was laid on it. Jesus is saying, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, is saying to him, Lord, he is already smelling, for it is the fourth day. Jesus is saying to her, Did I not say to you that if ever you should be believing, you should be seeing the glory of God? They then take away the stone. Yet Jesus lifts up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hearest me. Now I was aware that thou art hearing me always, but because of the throng standing about I said it, that they should be believing that thou dost commission me. And saying these things, he clamors with a loud voice, Lazarus, hither, out. And out came he who had died, bound feet and hands with winding sheets, and his countenance had been bound about with a handkerchief. Jesus is saying to them, Loose him and let him go. Many of the Jews then, who come to Mary and gaze at what Jesus does, believe in him. Yet some of them came away to the Pharisees and told them how much Jesus does. The chief priest and the Pharisees then gathered a Sanhedrin and said, What are we doing, seeing that this man is doing many signs? If we should be leaving him thus, all will be believing in him, and the Romans will come and take away our place as well as our nation. Now a certain one of them, Caiaphas, being the chief priest of that year, said to them, You are not aware of anything, neither are you reckoning that it is expedient for us that one man should be dying for the sake of the people, and not the whole nation should perish. Now this he said, not from himself, but being the chief priest of that year, he prophesied that Jesus was about to be dying for the sake of the nation, and not for the nation only, but that he may be gathering the scattered children of God also into one. From that day, then, they consult that they should kill him. Jesus, then, no longer walked with boldness among the Jews, but came away thence into the country near the wilderness, into a city termed Ephraim, and there he remains with his disciples. 
Now near was the Passover of the Jews, and many went up into Jerusalem out of the country before the Passover, that they should be purifying themselves. They then sought Jesus and said, standing with one another in the sanctuary, What do you suppose, that he may under no circumstances come to the festival? Now the chief priest and the Pharisees had given directions that if anyone should know where he is, he should be divulging it, so that they should be arresting him. Chapter 12 Jesus then, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was who had died, whom Jesus rouses from among the dead. They make then for him a dinner there, and Martha served. Now Lazarus was one of those lying back at table with him. Mary then, taking a pound troy of veritable nard adder, very precious, rubs the feet of Jesus and wipes off his feet with her hair. Now the house was filled with the odor of the adder, now Judas of Simon Iscariot, one of his disciples, who is about to give him up, is saying, Wherefore was not this adder disposed of for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? Now this he said, not that he cared concerning the poor, but that he was a thief, having the coffer also, and bore what is cast into it. Jesus then said, Let her be, that she should be keeping it for the day of my burial. For the poor you have always with you, yet me you have not always. The vast throng, then, of the Jews knew that he is there, and they came, not because of Jesus only, but that they might become acquainted with Lazarus also, whom Jesus rouses from among the dead. Yet the chief priests also planned that they should be killing Lazarus also, for many of the Jews went because of him and believed in Jesus. On the morrow, the vast throng who were coming for the festival, hearing that Jesus is coming into Jerusalem, got fronds of palms and came out to meet him. And they clamored, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who is coming in the name of the Lord, and the King of Israel. Now Jesus, finding a little ass, is seated on it, according as it is written, do not fear, daughter of Zion. Lo, your king is coming, sitting on an ass's colt. Now these things are not known to his disciples at first, but when Jesus is glorified, then they are reminded that these things were written of him, and these things they do to him. The throng, then, which is with him when he summons Lazarus out of the tomb and rouses him from among the dead, was testifying Therefore, also, the vast throng meets him, for they hear that he has done this sign. The Pharisees then say to themselves, You are beholding that you are benefiting nothing. Lo, the world came away after him. Now, there were some Greeks from among those going up that they should be worshipping in the festival. These then came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and they asked him, saying, Lord, we want to become acquainted with Jesus. Philip is coming and telling Andrew, and again, Andrew and Philip are coming and telling Jesus. Yet Jesus is answering them, saying, Come has the hour that the Son of Mankind should be glorified. Verily, verily, I am saying to you, if a kernel of grain falling into the earth should not be dying, it is remaining alone. Yet if it should be dying, it is bringing forth much fruit. He who is fond of his soul is destroying it, and he who is hating his soul in this world shall be guarding it for life eonian. If anyone should be serving me, let him be following me, and where I am, there my servant also shall be. And if anyone should be serving me, the Father shall be honoring him. Now is my soul disturbed. And what may I be saying? Father, save me out of this hour? But therefore came I into this hour. Father, glorify thy name. A voice then came out of heaven. I glorify it also, and shall be glorifying it again. The throng then, which stands and hears it, said, A thunderclap has come. Others said, A messenger has spoken to him. 
Jesus answered and said, Not because of me has come this voice, but because of you. Now is the judging of this world. Now shall the chief of this world be cast out. And I, if I should be exalted out of the earth, shall be drawing all to myself. Now this he said, signifying by what death he was about to be dying. The throng then answered him, We hear out of the law that the Christ is remaining for the eon, and how are you saying that the Son of Mankind must be exalted? Who is this Son of Mankind? Jesus then said to them, Still a little time the light is among you. Be walking while you have the light, lest the darkness may be overtaking you. And he who is walking in the darkness is not aware whither he is going. As you have the light, be believing in the light, that you may be becoming sons of light. These things Jesus speaks, and coming away, he was hid from them. Yet after his having done so many signs in front of them, they believed not in him, that the word of Isaiah the prophet, which he said, may be being fulfilled. Lord, who believes our tidings? And the arm of the Lord, to whom was it revealed? Therefore they could not believe, seeing that Isaiah said again that he has blinded their eyes and calluses their heart, lest they may be perceiving with their eyes and should be apprehending with their heart, and may be turning about, and I shall be healing them. These things Isaiah said, seeing that he perceived his glory, and speaks concerning him. Howbeit, likewise, of the chiefs also many believe in him, but because of the Pharisees they did not avow it, lest they may be put out of the synagogue, for they love the glory of men rather than even the glory of God. Now Jesus cries and said, He who is believing in me is not believing in me, but in him who sends me. And he who is beholding me is beholding him who sends me. I have come into the world a light, that every one who is believing in me should not be remaining in darkness. And if ever anyone should be hearing my declarations and not be maintaining them, I am not judging him, for I came not that I should be judging the world, but that I should be saving the world. He who is repudiating me and not getting my declarations has that which is judging him, the word which I speak. That will be judging him in the last day, seeing that I speak not from myself, but the Father who sends me. He has given me the precept, what I may be saying and what I should be speaking. And I am aware that his precept is life eonian. What, then, I am speaking, according as the Father has declared it to me, thus am I speaking. Chapter 13 now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus, being aware that his hour came, that he may be proceeding out of this world to the Father, loving his own who are in the world, he loves them to the consummation. And at the coming of dinner, the adversary already having cast into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, that he may be giving him up, Jesus, being aware that the Father has given all into his hands, and that he came out from God, and is going away to God, is rising from dinner, and is laying down his garments, and, getting a cloth, he girds himself. Thereafter, he is draining water into the basin, and begins washing the feet of the disciples, and wiping them off with the cloth with which he was girded. He is coming then to Simon Peter, and he is saying to him, Lord, thou art washing my feet. Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing you are not aware at present, yet you will know after these things. Peter is saying to him, Under no circumstances shouldst thou be washing my feet for the eon. Jesus answered him, If ever I should not be washing you, you are having no part with me. Simon Peter is saying to him, Lord, not my feet only, but the hands also and the head. Jesus is saying to him, he who is bathed has no need except to wash his feet, 
but is wholly clean. And you are clean, but not all. For he was aware who was giving him up. Therefore he said that not all of you are clean. When, then, he washes their feet and took his garments and leans back again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You are shouting to me, Teacher and Lord, and you are saying, Ideally, for I am. If, then, I, the Lord and the Teacher, wash your feet, you also ought to be washing one another's feet. For an example have I given you, that according as I do to you, you also may be doing. Verily, verily, I am saying to you, a slave is not greater than his Lord, neither is an apostle greater than he who sends him. If you are aware of these things, happy are you if you should be doing them. Not concerning all of you am I speaking, for I am aware whom I choose, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He who is masticating bread with me lifts up his heel against me. Henceforth I am speaking to you before it is occurring, that you should be believing whenever it may be occurring, that I am. Verily, verily, I am saying to you, whoever is taking anyone I shall be sending is taking me. Yet he who is taking me is taking him who sends me. These things saying, Jesus was disturbed in spirit, and testifies, and said, Verily, verily, I am saying to you that one of you will be giving me up. The disciples then looked at one another, being perplexed concerning whom he is speaking. Now one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was lying back in the bosom of Jesus. Simon Peter then is nodding to this one to ascertain whoever he may be concerning whom he said it and is saying to him, Tell us whoever it is concerning whom he is saying this. That one then, leaning back thus on the chest of Jesus, is saying to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus then is answering and saying, He it is to whom I, dipping in the morsel, shall be handing it. Dipping in the morsel then, he is taking it and giving it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. And after the morsel, then, Satan entered into that man. Jesus, then, is saying to him, What you are doing, do more quickly. Now, no one of those lying back at table knew to what purpose he said this to him. For some supposed, since Judas had the coffer, that Jesus is saying to him, Buy what we have need of for the festival, or that he may be giving something to the poor. Getting the morsel then, that man came out straightway. Now it was night. When then he came out, Jesus is saying, Now is the Son of Mankind glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God also shall be glorifying him in himself, and shall straightway be glorifying him. Little children, still a little time am I with you. You shall be seeking me, and according as I said to the Jews that where I am going you cannot be coming, at present I am saying it to you also. A new precept am I giving to you, that you be loving one another. According as I love you, that you also be loving one another. By this all shall be knowing that you are my disciples, if you should be having love for one another. Simon Peter is saying to him, Lord, whither art thou going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, yet you shall be following subsequently. Peter is saying to him, Lord, wherefore cannot I follow thee at present? My soul for thy sake will I lay down. Jesus is answering, your soul for my sake you will be laying down? Verily, verily, I am saying to you, under no circumstances should a cock be crowing till you will be renouncing me thrice. Chapter 14 Let not your heart be disturbed. Believe in God, 
and believe in me. In my Father's house are many abodes. Yet if not, I would have told you, for I am going to make ready a place for you. And if I should be going and making ready a place for you, I am coming again, and I will be taking you along to myself, that where I am, you also may be. And where I am going, you are aware, and of the way you are aware. Thomas is saying to him, Lord, we are not aware whither thou art going, and how can we be aware of the way? Jesus is saying to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one is coming to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And henceforth you know him, and have seen him. Philip is saying to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficing us. Jesus is saying to him, So much time I am with you, and you do not know me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. And how are you saying, Show us the Father? Are you not believing that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The declarations which I am speaking to you, I am not speaking from myself. Now the Father remaining in me, he is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Yet if not, believe me because of the works themselves. Verily, verily, I am saying to you, he who is believing in me, the works which I am doing, he also will be doing, and greater than these will he be doing, for I am going to the Father. And whatever you should be requesting in my name, this I will be doing, that the Father should be glorified in the Son. If you should ever be requesting anything of me in my name, this I will be doing. If you should be loving me, you will be keeping my precepts. And I shall be asking the Father, and he will be giving you another Consoler, that it, indeed, may be with you for the eon, the Spirit of truth, which the world cannot get, for it is not beholding it, neither is knowing it. Yet you know it, for it is remaining with you and will be in you. I will not leave you bereaved. I am coming to you. Still a little, and the world is beholding me no longer. Yet you are beholding me. Seeing that I am living, you also will be living. In that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my precepts and is keeping them, he it is who is loving me. Now he who is loving me will be loved by my Father, and I shall be loving him and shall be disclosing myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, is saying to him, Lord, and what has occurred that thou art about to be disclosing thyself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, if any one should be loving me, he will be keeping my word, and my Father will be loving him, and we shall be coming to him and making an abode with him. He who is not loving me is not keeping my words. And the word which you are hearing is not mine, but the Father's who sends me. These things have I spoken to you, remaining with you. Now the Consoler, the Holy Spirit, which the Father will be sending in my name, that will be teaching you all and reminding you of all that I said to you. Peace I am leaving with you. My peace I am giving to you. Not according as the world is giving to you am I giving to you. Let not your heart be disturbed, neither let it be timid. You hear that I said to you, I am going and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have declared it to you, ere it is occurring, that whenever it may be occurring, you should be believing. No longer shall I be speaking much with you, for the chief of the world is coming, and in me it has not anything. 
but that the world may know that I am loving the Father, and according as the Father directs me, thus I am doing. Rouse. We may be going hence. Chapter 15 I am the true grapevine, and my Father is the farmer. Every branch in me bringing forth no fruit, he is taking it away, and every one bringing forth fruit, he is cleansing it, that it may be bringing forth more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Remain in me. I also am in you. According as the branch cannot be bringing forth fruit from itself, if it should not be remaining in the grapevine, thus neither you, if you should not be remaining in me. I am the grapevine, you are the branches. He who is remaining in me and I in him, this one is bringing forth much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone should not be remaining in me, he was cast out as a branch, and it withered. And they are gathering them, and into the fire are they casting them, and they are being burned. If ever you should be remaining in me, and my declaration should be remaining in you, whatever you should be wanting, request, and it will be occurring to you. In this is my Father glorified, that you may be bringing forth much fruit, and you shall become my disciples. According as the Father loves me, I also love you. Remain in my love. If ever you should be keeping my precepts, you will be remaining in my love, according as I have kept the precepts of my Father, and am remaining in his love. These things have I spoken to you, that my joy should be remaining in you, and your joy may be filled. This is my precept, that you be loving one another, according as I love you. Greater love than this has no one, that anyone may be laying down his soul for his friends. You are my friends, if you should be doing whatever I am directing you. No longer am I terming you slaves, but the slave is not aware what his Lord is doing. Yet I have declared you friends, for all that I hear from my Father I make known to you. Not you choose me, but I choose you, and I appoint you that you may be going away and be bringing forth much fruit, and your fruit may be remaining, that anything whichsoever you should be requesting the Father in my name, he will be giving it to you. In these things I am directing you, that you may be loving one another. If the world is hating you, know that it has hated me first before you. If you were of the world, the world would be fond of its own. Now, seeing that you are not of the world, but I choose you out of the world, therefore the world is hating you. Remember the word which I said to you, a slave is not greater than his Lord. If me they persecute, you they will be persecuting also. If my word they keep, yours also will they be keeping. But all these things will they be doing to you because of my name, seeing that they are not acquainted with him who sends me. If I came not and speak to them, they had no sin. Yet now they have no pretense concerning their sin. He who is hating me is hating my Father also. If I do not the works among them, which no other one does, they had no sin. Yet now they have seen also, and they have hated me as well as my Father. But it is that the word written in their law may be fulfilled, that they hate me gratuitously. Now, whenever the Consoler, which I shall be sending you from the Father, may be coming, the Spirit of Truth which is going out from the Father, that will be testifying concerning me. Now you also are testifying, seeing that from the beginning you are with me. Chapter 16 These things have I spoken to you, that you may not be snared, for they will be putting you out of the synagogues. But coming is the hour that everyone who is killing you should suppose he is offering divine service to God. And these things will they be doing to you, for they know not the Father, nor even me. 
But these things have I spoken to you that whenever their hour may be coming, you may be remembering them, seeing that I told you. Now these things I did not tell you from the beginning, seeing that I was with you. Yet now I am going away to him who sends me, and not one of you is asking me, Whither art thou going? But seeing that I have spoken these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. But I am telling you the truth. It is expedient for you that I may be coming away. For if I should not be coming away, the Consoler will not be coming to you. Now, if I should be gone, I will send him to you. And coming, that will be exposing the world concerning sin and concerning righteousness and concerning judging. Concerning sin, indeed, seeing that they are not believing in me. Yet concerning righteousness, seeing that I am going away to my Father, and no longer are you beholding me. Yet concerning judging, seeing that the chief of this world has been judged. Still much have I to say to you, but you are not able to bear it at present. Yet whenever that may be coming, the Spirit of truth, it will be guiding you into all the truth, for it will not be speaking from itself, but whatsoever it should be hearing will it be speaking, and of what is coming will it be informing you. That will be glorifying me, seeing that of mine will it be getting and informing you. A little and no longer are you beholding me, and again a little and you shall be seeing me. Some then of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he is saying to us, A little and you are not beholding me, and again a little and you shall be seeing me, and that I am going away to the Father? They said then, What is this little which he is saying? Not aware are we of what he is speaking. Jesus then knew that they wanted to ask him, and he said to them, Concerning this are you seeking with one another that I said, A little, and you are not beholding me, and again a little, and you shall be seeing me? Verily, verily, I am saying to you that you shall be lamenting and wailing, yet the world will be rejoicing. Yet you shall be sorrowed, but your sorrow shall become joy. A woman, whenever she may be bringing forth, is having sorrow, seeing that her hour came. Yet whenever she should be bearing the little child, no longer is she remembering the affliction, because of the joy that a human being was born into the world. You then also, now, indeed, will be having sorrow, Yet I shall be seeing you again, and your heart shall be rejoicing, and your joy no one is taking away from you. And in that day you will not be asking me anything. Verily, verily, I am saying to you that whatever you should be requesting the Father, he will be giving it to you in my name. Hitherto you do not request anything in my name. Request, and you shall obtain that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken to you in Proverbs. Coming is the hour when no longer shall I be speaking to you in Proverbs, but with boldness shall I be reporting to you concerning the Father. In that day you will be requesting in my name, and I am not saying to you that I shall be asking the Father concerning you, for the Father himself is fond of you, seeing that you are fond of me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came out from the Father, and have come into the world. Again, I am leaving the world, and am going to the Father. His disciples are saying to him, Lo, now with boldness art thou speaking, and not one proverb art thou telling. Now we are aware that thou art aware of all, and hast no need that anyone may be asking thee. By this we are believing that thou camest out from God. Jesus answered them, At present you are believing. Lo, the hour is coming and has come, that you should be scattered, each to his own, and you may be leaving me alone. And I am not alone, for the Father is with me. 
These things have I spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you have affliction, but courage, I have conquered the world. Chapter 17 These things speaks Jesus, and lifting his eyes to heaven he said, Father, come has the hour. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son should be glorifying thee, according as thou givest him authority over all flesh, that everything which thou hast given to him, he should be giving it to them, even life Ionian. Now it is Ionian life that they may know thee, the only true God, and him whom thou dost commission, Jesus Christ. I glorify thee on the earth, finishing the work which thou hast given me, that I should be doing it. And now glorify thou me, Father, with thyself, with the glory which I had before the world is with thee. I manifest thy name to the men whom thou givest me out of the world. Thine they were, and to me thou givest them, and thy word they have kept. Now they know that all, whatever thou hast given me, is from thee, for the declarations which thou hast given me, I have given them, and they took them, and know truly that I came out from thee, and they believe that thou dost commission me. Concerning them I am asking, not concerning the world am I asking, but concerning those whom thou hast given me, for they are thine, and mine all are thine, and thine mine and I have been glorified in them. And no longer am I in the world, and they are in the world, and I to thee am coming. Holy Father, keep them in thy name, in which thou hast given them to me, that they may be one, according as we are. When I was with them in the world, I kept those whom thou hast given me in thy name, and I guard them, and not one of them perished, except the son of destruction, that the scripture may be fulfilled. Yet now to thee am I coming, and these things am I speaking in the world, that they may be having my joy filled full in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hates them, for they are not of the world, according as I am not of the world. I am not asking that thou shouldest be taking them away out of the world, but that thou shouldest be keeping them from the wicked one. Of the world they are not, according as I am not of the world. Hallow them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. According as thou dost dispatch me into the world, I also dispatch them into the world. And for their sakes I am hallowing myself, that they also may be hallowed by the truth. Yet not concerning these only am I asking, but also concerning those who are believing in me through their word, that they may all be one, according as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be in us, that the world should be believing that thou dost commission me. And I have given them the glory which thou hast given me, that they may be one, according as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be perfected in one, and that the world may know that thou dost commission me, and dost love them according as thou dost love me. Father, those whom thou hast given me, I will that where I am they also may be with me, that they may be beholding my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the disruption of the world. Just Father, the world also knew thee not, yet I knew thee. And these know that thou dost commission me, and I make known to them thy name, and I shall make it known, that the love with which thou lovest me may be in them, and I in them. Chapter 18 These things saying, Jesus came out with his disciples to the other side of the Kedron Winter Brook, where there was a garden, into which he entered, he and his disciples. Now Judas also, who is giving him up, was acquainted with the place, for often was Jesus gathered there with his disciples. 
Judas then, getting a squad and deputies of the chief priests and Pharisees, is coming there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus then, being aware of all that is coming on him, coming out, said to them, Whom are you seeking? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus is saying to them, I am he. Now Judas also, who was giving him up, stood with them. As then he said to them, I am he, they drop behind and fall on the ground. Again then he inquires of them, Whom are you seeking? Now they said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I said to you that I am he. If then me you are seeking, let these go away. That fulfilled may be the saying which he said that, Of those whom thou hast given me, of them I do not lose any one. Simon Peter then, having a sword, draws it and hits the chief priest's slave and strikes off his right ear. Now the name of the slave was Malchus. Jesus then said to Peter, Thrust the sword into the scabbard. The cup which the Father has given me, may I by no means be drinking it? The squad then, and the captain, and the deputies of the Jews apprehended Jesus. And they bind him and led him away to Hannas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the chief priest of that year. Now it was Caiaphas who advises the Jews that it is expedient for one man to be dying for the people. Now Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now that disciple was known to the chief priest, and he entered together with Jesus into the courtyard of the chief priest. Yet Peter stood at the door outside. The other disciple then, who was known to the chief priest, came out and told the doorkeeper, and he led Peter in. The maid then who kept the door is saying to Peter, Are not you also of this man's disciples? He is saying, I am not. Now the slaves and deputies also stood by, having made a charcoal fire, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. Now Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. The chief priest then asks Jesus concerning his disciples and concerning his teaching. And Jesus answered him, I with boldness have spoken to the world. I always teach in a synagogue and in the sanctuary where all the Jews are coming together, and in hiding I speak nothing. Why are you asking me? Inquire of those who have heard what I speak to them. Lo, these are aware what I said. Now at his saying these things, one of the deputies standing by gives Jesus a slap, saying, Are you answering the chief priest thus? Jesus answered him, If evilly I speak, testify concerning the evil. Yet if ideally, why are you lashing me? Hannas then dispatches him bound to Caiaphas, the chief priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They said then to him, Are not you also of his disciples? He disowns and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the chief priest, being a relative of the one whose ear Peter strikes off, is saying, did not I perceive you in the garden with him? Again, then, Peter disowns, and immediately a cock crows. They are, then, leading Jesus from Caiaphas into the praetorium. Now it was morning, and they did not enter into the praetorium, lest they may be defiled, but may be eating the Passover. Pilate, then, came outside to them, and is averring, what accusation are you bringing against this man? They answered and said to him, If this man were doing no evil, we would not give him up to you. Pilate then said to them, You take him, and according to your law, judge him. The Jews then said to him, To us it is not allowed to kill anyone, that the word of Jesus may be fulfilled which he said, signifying by what death he was about to be dying. 
Again, then, Pilate entered into the praetorium and summons Jesus and said to him, You are the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, From yourself are you saying this, or did others tell you concerning me? Pilate answered, No Jew am I. Your nation and the chief priests give you up to me. What is it you do? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my deputies also would have contended, lest I should be given up to the Jews. Yet now is my kingdom not hence. Pilate then said to him, Is it not then so? A king are you? Jesus answered, You are saying that I am a king. For this also have I been born, and for this have I come into the world, that I should be testifying to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth is hearing my voice. Pilate is saying to him, What is truth? And this saying, again he came out to the Jews, and is saying to them, I not one fault am finding in him. Now it is your usage that I should be releasing one to you in the Passover. Are you intending then that I should be releasing to you the king of the Jews? They then all clamor again, saying, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Chapter 19 Then Pilate took Jesus then and scourges him. And the soldiers, braiding a wreath out of thorns, place it on his head, and with a purple cloak they clothed him. And they came to him and said, Rejoice, king of the Jews, and give him slaps. And Pilate came outside again, and is saying to them, Lo, I am leading him outside to you, that you may know that not one fault am I finding in him. Jesus then came outside, wearing the thorny wreath and the purple cloak. And he is saying to them, Lo, the man! When then the chief priest and the deputies perceived him, they clamor, saying, Crucify! Crucify him! And Pilate is saying to them, You take him and crucify him, for I am finding no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to our law he ought to die for he makes himself son of God. When, then, Pilate hears this saying, he was the more afraid. And he entered into the praetorium again, and is saying to Jesus, Whence are you? Yet Jesus gives him no answer. Pilate then is saying to him, To me you are not speaking. Are you not aware that I have authority to release you, and have authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, No authority have you against me in anything, except it were given to you from above. Therefore he who is giving me up to you has the greater sin. At this Pilate sought to release him. Yet the Jews clamored, saying, If ever this man you should be releasing, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who is making himself king is contradicting Caesar. Pilate then, hearing these words, led Jesus outside and is seated on a dais in a place termed the pavement, yet in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the preparation of the Passover. The hour was about the third. And he is saying to the Jews, Lo, your king. Yet they clamor then, Away, away, crucify him. Pilate is saying to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, No king have we except Caesar. Then he gives him up to them, then that he may be crucified. They took Jesus along then and led him away. And bearing the cross himself, he came out to what is termed a skull's place, which is termed in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucify him and with him two others, hence and hence. Yet in the midst is Jesus. Now Pilate writes a title also, and places it on the cross. 
Now it was written, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. This title, then, many of the Jews read, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. The chief priest of the Jews, then, said to Pilate, Do not be writing the King of the Jews, but that that one said, King of the Jews am I. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. The soldiers then, when they crucified Jesus, took his garments and make four parts, to each soldier a part, and the tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven from above throughout the whole. They said then to one another, We should not be rending it, but we may take chances on it, whose it shall be, that the scripture may be fulfilled, which is saying, They divide my garments among themselves, and on my vesture they cast the lot. The soldiers indeed then do these things. Now there stood beside the cross of Jesus his mother and the sister of his mother, Mary of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. Jesus then, perceiving his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, is saying to his mother, Woman, lo, your son. Thereafter he is saying to the disciple, Lo, your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own. After this, Jesus, being aware that all is already accomplished, that the scripture may be perfected, is saying, I thirst. Now a vessel lay there distended with vinegar. Sticking a sponge then, distended with vinegar, on hyssop, they carry it to his mouth. When, then, Jesus took the vinegar... He said, It is accomplished. And reclining his head, he gives up the spirit. The Jews then, since it was the preparation, lest the body should be remaining on the cross on the Sabbath, for it was the great day that Sabbath, asked Pilate that they might be fracturing their legs and they may be taken away. The soldiers then came and fractured indeed the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified together with him. Yet coming on to Jesus, as they perceived he had already died, they do not fracture his legs. But one of the soldiers pierces his side with a lance head, and straightway came out blood and water. And he who has seen has testified, and true is his testimony. And he is aware that he is telling the truth, that you also should be believing. For these things occurred that the scripture might be fulfilled. A bone of it shall not be crushed. And again, a different scripture is saying, They shall see him whom they stab. Now after these things, Joseph from Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, yet hidden because of fear of the Jews, asks Pilate that he should be taking away the body of Jesus. And Pilate permits him. He came then and takes away his body. Now Nicodemus also came, who came to him at night at first, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds troy. They got the body of Jesus then, and they bind it in swathings with the spices, according as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now there was in the place where he was crucified a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one has been placed as yet. There, then, because of the preparation of the Jews, seeing that the tomb was near, they placed Jesus. Chapter 20 Now, on one of the Sabbaths, Miriam Magdalene is coming to the tomb in the morning, there being still darkness, and is observing the stone taken away from the door of the tomb. She is racing, then, and is coming to Simon Peter and to the other disciple of whom Jesus was fond, and she is saying to them, they take away the Lord out of the tomb, and we are not aware where they place him. Peter then and the other disciple came out, and they came to the tomb. Now the two raced alike, and the other disciple runs more swiftly before Peter and came first to the tomb. And peering in, he is observing the swathings lying, howbeit he did not enter. 
Simon Peter also then is coming, following him, and he entered into the tomb, and he is beholding the swathings lying, and the handkerchief which was on his head, not lying with the swathings, but folded up in one place apart. The other disciple also then, who came first to the tomb, then entered, and he perceived and believes. For not as yet were they aware of the scripture that he must rise from among the dead. The disciples then came away again to their own. Now Mary stood outside at the tomb, lamenting. As then she lamented, she peers into the tomb and is beholding two messengers in white, seated, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus was laid. And they are saying to her, Woman, why are you lamenting? And she is saying to them that they take away my Lord, and I am not aware where they place him. Saying these things, she turned behind and is beholding Jesus standing, and she was not aware that it is Jesus. Jesus is saying to her, Woman, why are you lamenting? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing that he is the gardener, is saying to him, Lord, if you bear him off, tell me where you place him, and I will take him away. Jesus is saying to her, Miriam. Now, being turned, she is saying to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which is the term for teacher. Jesus is saying to her, Do not touch me, for not as yet have I ascended to my Father. Now go to my brethren, and say to them that I said, Lo, I am ascending to my Father, and your Father, and my God, and your God. Miriam Magdalene is coming, reporting to the disciples that, I have seen the Lord, and these things he said to her. It being, then, the evening of that day, one of the Sabbaths, and the doors having been locked where the disciples were gathered together because of fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and is saying to them, Peace to you. And saying this, he shows them his hands also and his side. The disciples then rejoiced at perceiving the Lord. Jesus then said to them again, Peace to you. According as the Father has commissioned me, I also am sending you. And saying this, he exhales and is saying to them, Get Holy Spirit. If you should be forgiving anyone's sins, they have been forgiven them. If anyone's you should be holding, they are held. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, termed Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples then said to him, We have seen the Lord. Yet he said to them, Should I not perceive in his hands the print of the nails, and thrust my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will by no means be believing. And after eight days his disciples were again within, and Thomas was with them. The doors having been locked, Jesus is coming and stood in the midst, and said, Peace to you. Thereafter he is saying to Thomas, Bring your finger here, and perceive my hands, and bring your hand and thrust it into my side, and do not become unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Now Jesus is saying to him, Seeing that you have seen me, you have believed. Happy are those who are not perceiving and believe. Indeed, then, many other signs also Jesus does in the sight of his disciples, which are not written in this scroll. Yet these are written that you should be believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that, believing, you may have life Ionian in his name. Chapter 21 After these things, Jesus manifests himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. Now he manifests thus. There were alike Simon Peter and Thomas, termed Didymus, and Nathanael from Cana of Galilee, and those of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter is saying to them, I am going fishing. They are saying to him, We also are coming with you. 
They then came out and stepped into the ship straightway, and in that night they net nothing. Now, as it already is becoming morning, Jesus stood on the beach. Howbeit, the disciples had not perceived that it is Jesus. Jesus then is saying to them, Little children, have you no viands? They answered him, No. Now he said to them, Cast the net on the right parts of the ship, and you will be finding. They cast then, and they no longer were strong enough to draw it for the multitude of fishes. That disciple then, whom Jesus loved, is saying to Peter, It is the Lord. Simon Peter then, hearing that it is the Lord, girds on his overcoat, for he was naked, and cast himself into the sea. Yet the other disciples came in the other boat, for they were not far from the land, but about two hundred cubits off, dragging the net of fishes. As then they stepped off to the land, they are observing a charcoal fire laid, and food fish lying on it, and bread. Jesus is saying to them, Bring of the food fish which you now net. Simon Peter then went up and draws the net to the land, distended with a hundred and fifty-three large fishes. And being so many, the net is not rent. Jesus is saying to them, Hither, lunch. Now no one of the disciples dared to inquire of him, Who art thou, being aware that it is the Lord? Jesus then is coming and taking the bread and is giving it to them, and the food fish likewise. Now this is already the third time Jesus was manifested to the disciples after being roused from among the dead. When then they lunch, Jesus is saying to Simon Peter, Simon of John, are you loving me more than these? He is saying to him, Yes, Lord, thou art aware that I am fond of thee. He is saying to him, Graze my lambkins. He is saying to him again a second time, Simon of John, are you loving me? He is saying to him, Yes, Lord, thou art aware that I am fond of thee. He is saying to him, Shepherd my sheep. He is saying to him the third time, Simon of John, are you fond of me? Peter was sorry that he said to him the third time, Are you fond of me? And he is saying to him, Lord, thou art aware of all things. Thou knowest that I am fond of thee. And Jesus is saying to him, Graze my little sheep. Verily, verily, I am saying to you, When you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you would. Yet whenever you may be growing decrepit, you will stretch out your hands, and another shall be girding you and carrying you where you would not. Now this he said, signifying by what death he will be glorifying God. And saying this, he is saying to him, Follow me. Now Peter, being turned about, is observing the disciple whom Jesus loved, following, who leans back also on his chest at the dinner, and said to him, Lord, who is it who is giving thee up? Peter then, perceiving this one, is saying to Jesus, Lord, yet what of this man? Jesus is saying to him, If I should be wanting him to be remaining till I am coming, what is it to you? You be following me. This word then came out to the brethren that that disciple is not dying. Now Jesus did not say to him that he is not dying, but if I should be wanting him to be remaining till I am coming, what is it to you? This is the disciple who is testifying also concerning these things, and who writes these things. And we are aware that his testimony is true. Now, there are many other things also which Jesus does, which, if they should be written one by one, I am surmising not even the world itself would contain the written scrolls. The End of John's Account